Hi there, it's Luke once again, and welcome back to the M5 Stack official channel. We've been looking at the Core 2 over the past couple of weeks and ways that we can interact with it. In this new video series, we're going to be having a look at some games that we can make for the Core 2 using the touchscreen. Games such as this. We have a smiley face, and then we need to catch it every time it changes. But there are also angry faces. If we press on those, we lose a life. So it's a game of challenging yourself to see how many smiley faces you can get before you lose all your lives. Let's see how we can go about programming it. First we'll need to go to the GitHub page that I've put in the uh, description below to get both of the assets. I've also uploaded the final code here, so if you want to skip through the video and then just analyze the code, you're more than welcome to. Okay, once we've downloaded the assets, we'll go into UI Flow. And now we want to play some image placeholders here first. One for both the smiley face and one for the angry face. And we're also going to need a bunch of labels. Uh, in particularly for the lives and also for the score. It doesn't really matter where we put them for now, we can arrange them a bit later. And now we need to upload the files that we downloaded from GitHub. So if you've never done that, it's pretty simple. You need to make sure your device is already connected. And then we go into the Device File Manager. Add Image, then select your image. Remember it must be uh, PNG and it must be below 50 kilobytes. And you can see that I've already uploaded a bunch of files already. So I have my smiley and angry. Okay, so now I can set those. Okay, so that's what, all we need for now for the images. Now, um, now I'm gonna add a loop and then set a few things up. Oh, one more last thing I forgot. We also need a we need to set the image to hide first, uh, the one that's going to be angry because we only want it to appear every now and then. Oh, and also forgot that we need one more label. So basically when we game over, when we've lost our lives, we want the text game over to appear. And I want that nice and big, so I'll set that to the biggest font size. And also we don't want game over appearing at the very start, so we'll set that label also to be hidden. Okay, now we want to start making some variables. So we'll make a variable for the score, and we'll set the score to zero at the start, of course. And we'll create another variable for lives, and I think three is a fair number. You're welcome to change it if you want, if you find the game too difficult or too easy. and. We're going to need to track the position of both of these um, game elements. So we need to create an X and a Y coordinate for both of them. And we want to make sure that the position that they appear on the screen is randomized. So that's another reason why we'll be using these variables. So we'll drag all of these in here. For now, we don't need to worry about setting the coordinate of the angry face because it's hidden, it's not going to appear until later, but we want to make sure when the game starts that the smiley is placed in a random position. So we'll just add these random integer from and to blocks, I'll duplicate a bunch of numbers, and then this is relating to the size of the screen we know it is 240 by 320 pixels. So obviously we cannot use zero or 240 because our object would be off the screen or only half appear on the screen. So we wanna set it a little bit back from both of the edges. So now for the labels, obviously we want to show um, the lives and the score with a little bit of a descriptor. So I'll use this text block here in the label and lives, okay, and then lives, yes. And I'll just duplicate this and we can do the same again for score. Just change the variable and change the text. Okay, that's cool now. Now we can start to work on the mechanics of the game. 
So first what I want to do is to set the smiley face image um, to the random coordinates. So that's what I'm going to do. Set image to smiley X and smiley Y. And now let's drag in an if condition to start the logic of our game. Of course, we'll need to test the touchscreen mechanic first. So in hardware, as we go to touch, and these are three blocks that we're going to be using quite a lot during this game tutorial. So get touch coordinate X, Y, and get touch press state. So next, what we need to do is to set up the touch sensing functionality. So we'll go back into logic and then we need one of these comparator blocks and also a and block. So we'll put one of these either side. So basically what we're going to try and do is to check whether the current touch coordinate is uh, equal to the coordinate of the smiley. Um, but also we need to check whether um, we need a little bit of buffer area. So basically what happens is um, the origin is at the corner of the picture. But of course it's very difficult for us to click exactly in the corner. So we need a little bit of a buffer zone. So what we need to do here is add this here as well. So get touch coordinate is more than or equal to the smiley X or the origin and also less than or equal to uh, this coordinate plus the buffer zone, which we'll say about, let's say 50, because I know it's roughly about 50 pixels uh, with is my little icon there. If the get touch coordinate, yeah, this is looking a bit more right now. So also we'll need to do that for the Y coordinate. So we can copy this over here and simply change this to smiley Y and also change this to get touch coordinate Y. That's about right. Oh, and then we need to change this also. So that's about all we need for the touch mechanic in the game. We need here to add the get touch status and set it to only check this if it's true. That way we negate any bugs from smiley generating in the position where the last touch point was. And now I've created this other function and I'll add both of this function into those if conditions. And this is basically just to register a hit and then increase the score by one and generate the image in a new spot. So of course we also need to have the angry face appear. So what I thought to get that angry face to appear only ever so often is to add in this chunk of code which basically makes it happen that if the score is a prime number then it makes this angry face appear for a certain amount of time and then if that's touched we basically lose one life. And of various things else that I added on, like I wanted to have a game over function. So basically we would have this while loop that checks if we're still in the game state and once our lives are depleted, then it basically would reset back to the start menu where we can press the A buttons to start the game again. I will be doing a more in-depth written guide to this if you want to see more info on this process but as I mentioned earlier you can download the M5F file from my github. That's about all we have time for this week. Hope you enjoyed programming this game and you learned something new. If you have any questions or got stuck anywhere make sure to leave a comment down in the comment section. Please also like, subscribe and I shall see you in the next video. Goodbye.